quite a worn out subject, the reader must think, but there are still a few things I think are worth mentioning about it. To summarize what I've said earlier, people, mostly of specific bloodlines, are abducted either by government agencies, the IT themselves, or a mix of them both, for a few reasons, primarily. They want to deep study how our DNA has developed, and perhaps make changes when necessary in a certain number of individuals in order for the ETs to feel comfortable to incarnate either into the abducted body or into its descendants. First, IA has over the years conquered new star races, and new star races have joined his cause. Those new star races, if they have IA's permission, are also to be incarnated here in small groups, so they can be part of the future global elite. Second, the all star races, such as the Alpha Draconians, who have been with IA for quite some time now, are the ones who need to adjust the human DNA of the bloodline, or bloodlines they have selected as their future vessels. Third, we have races of genuine grace who are basically us in the future who want to retrieve our DNA in order to recreate the biological body form they once had, but lost in a future machine kingdom. First, we have the military-industrial complex that either abduct people on their own, mostly for genetic research, or work together with the alien invader force in the abduction scenario. What is common for the first three categories is that the abductors lack human emotions. One could say that those of the first category do too. The Pleiadians, in a lecture I just heard, said the abductors keep their heart chakra closed. In a war zone, I would assume that this is a normal thing to do, to mentally survive. And this sector of the universe is a war zone, apparently just don't think that it's like that everywhere. When I talk about the military-industrial complex, more often than not, the people who operate on the abductee are emotionless, mind-controlled slaves who are programmed to do their job. And when it's done, they go home to their families and forget all about what they have done. Then above these people are, of course, the emotionless elite hybrids, who have another mix of DNA in them, which make them less prone to feel. These days, most of these elite bloodlines are also possessed by the nomads and others. Because of all this, the abductors often have to suffer when they are kidnapped. I know this sounds pretty discouraging for a person who reads this and actually is an abductee, having experienced all this agony and pain. However, there is a solution to this which also may prevent future abductions. My suggestion is to go to a regression therapist. Some of you who read this may say, I've already done that and they are still taking me. This may very well be true, but the regression therapists have in that case not helped you uh, looking for the correct thing yet. That's why. It's a good idea to first re-experience the abductions in the sessions in order to get rid of all the feeling of trauma around the experiences. But then it's time to start looking for what I called the agreement. Somewhere buried underneath all this is an agreement with the ETs to let them abduct you. This agreement could have been done between lives, where everything feels easy because you don't experience the heaviness and difficulties of the material world and the counter-energies from the alien invader force who rule down here. 
More commonly, there was a manipulative agreement which the abductee subconsciously or unconsciously may or may not be aware of an encounter between lives or in a present or a past life with these beings may have resulted in a manipulative agreement that you would void immediately if you could. And you can. Once you are ready to look for it, tell the therapist that you need to find the initial agreement in regression. It could take a while to find it. Hopefully it won't. But once you find it, you will know you did. Then you just tell the tears out loud and or just telepathically that this agreement or any agreement that you have with them is now void and that you won't permit them to take you again under any circumstances. This should help. Sometimes regression therapy in this sense is not even necessary, you just let them know that any agreement you've done with them is void and that you have changed your mind. The toughest cases are those who say that they sympathize with their abductors and even if it physically and mentally hurts, the abductors are in such need of doing what they are doing that the abductors want to help them. The so-called Stockholm Syndrome after a kidnapping drama in Stockholm, Sweden in the 90s, 70s, when the people who were kidnapped started sympathizing with their kidnappers once they began to know them. The ETs may have told them that the abductee is helping their race survive. These people first need to convince themselves that the abduction phenomenon is not benevolent and especially not when pain and suffering is involved, and the cycle needs to be broken. This, however, is something for the regression therapist or any psychic who is taking on the case to work out with you. The bottom line is that humans here on Earth should not be abducted. We are an evolving race, even though we have been tampered with and should, as such, be left alone. There are star beings, however, who come here in physical, enter a human body from birth, or contact selected people on a soul level to help us human break the spell, but they do so by following certain universal rules and protocols, and they don't break them. In addition, they certainly don't, in any shape or form, hurt the people they are contacting. <laughs>